If you're a runner, chances are you own one of these, maximalist running shoes. They are the industry standard in a humongous running shoe market that is predicted to reach $26 billion in 2026. And they are extremely comfortable. Today, we're very much used to this type of comfort. But if you gave these shoes to someone in the 80s or 90s, they would literally be blown away just by how comfortable they really are. Barefoot shoes, on the other hand, are not that comfortable. They have none of that cushioning, no heel to toe drop, and none of that arch support rapidity hippity hop. The thesis of this video is the more uncomfortable your shoes are, the more efficient your running technique becomes. And if you think about it, you have certainly heard that somewhere before, as this principle of uncomfortable leads to more efficiency is deeply rooted within us. Just think about weightlifting for a second. The more we put ourselves in an uncomfortable position by lifting heavier and heavier weights, the more efficiently we can build muscle. Cold exposure, Wim Hof. By putting ourselves in a very uncomfortable position in an ice bath, for example, our body becomes more efficient at utilizing the available oxygen for our most vital organs. Now, is the same true for running? If we put ourselves in a more uncomfortable position by running in barefoot shoes, does our technique also become more efficient? Well, research says yes, by 7%. Let's break it down. So what happens when you take off your shoes? Back when you were a child and you were running around barefoot, you had perfect, efficient running form. Your body was leaning forward as you ran, your hips were engaged, you had a high cadence and a mid to forefoot strike in order to feel the ground in front of you and not get hurt by little rocks that might be lying around. See, when you're running barefoot, your brain does not allow you to heel strike because that really hurts. So you subconsciously adopt more of a midfoot strike and use your foot arches and the 29 tiny muscles in your feet to feel the ground and absorb the impact. Runners in maximalist shoes, however, predominantly heel strike because the cushion protects them from the impact. So you don't have to feel the ground in front of you. And basically you can cheat by just rolling your feet from heel to toe. And as a result, your foot arches and the 29 muscles in your foot, they stay quite dormant and passive while you run. This understimulation can lead to flat feet. And I have to cringe when I see my friends getting insults for their shoes with arch support because they think it's gonna help them with flat feet. It's not, that is absolute bullshit. If you wanna restore the arches in your foot, you have to use them, okay? If you wanna change the fruit, you have to change the root. It's not by adding insoles to your shoes that you're gonna regain your arches. So the first takeaway is by understimulating the muscles in your feet, they become weak and that obviously doesn't help you for gaining efficiencies when you're running. Now after your foot strike, the second big efficiency gain you get from running in barefoot shoes comes from a higher cadence. According to research conducted by the runner's clinic, the average running cadence of a barefoot runner is around 180 steps per minute, compared to 155 for the average recreational runner with maximalist running shoes. That's a huge difference and it has major implications on your running form, efficiencies and also risk of injury. I made an entire video about that that you can check out where I try to explain it as good as possible. But to keep it short, a higher cadence implies a shorter stride, which in turn means that we are moving less vertical distance in the air because you have to jump less high from step to step. And of course, the less energy we spend in vertical movement, the faster we can get from A to B. And then there's a vertical impact. Now this is super important if you wanna avoid injuries or have been struggling with them in the past. The higher your cadence, the less impact your bones and tissues have to endure on every step. It might not seem like a lot, but if you consider that a one hour run involves close to 10,000 steps, it makes a huge difference in the long run. And lastly, let's talk about an amazing little fact about your feet that will change the way you look at running. We have connective tissues in our feet that are literally functioning like little coil springs if you use them correctly. Your Achilles tendon, for instance, is working like a slingshot. The quicker you load and release, the more energy return you get from it and the less you have to use your muscles to propel yourself forward. And the same is true for your foot arches. As we put pressure on the front of our foot and release, our feet act like a spring and help us propel ourselves forward without again having to rely on muscle. Now this shows again why having a high cadence and a quick reactivity on the ground is so important for conserving energy. And it explains why runners in barefoot shoes are up to 7% more efficient than runners in maximalist running shoes. Now if you're serious about improving your running efficiencies, Go to the gym and film yourself on a treadmill for one minute in shoes like this and then for one minute without any shoes. And you will be able to observe 
the points that I mentioned throughout this video, which were foot strike, cadence, and reactivity on the ground. For a full guide on how to make your own gait analysis at the gym, you can check out this video. If you're interested in knowing what type of running shoe fits your style and level best, you can check out this one. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you got any value from this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.